CPU Galaxy. Welcome to the CPU Galaxy channel and today with a benchmark battle between all different 486DX4 100 CPUs. Yeah, actually there were several DX4s on the market and I'm just curious how they will perform and which one is going to win the race. Here I have 8 different DX4 CPUs, 2 from Intel, AMD, IBM, Cyrix, Texas Instruments and ST. Let me explain to you a bit the differences. Yeah, the IBM, the Texas Instruments, ST and Cyrix, they all share the same core. All of them are using a Cyrix chip inside. So at the end we just need to consider one of those CPUs in our benchmarking. But beside that I will test all of them to be sure there are no differences. Yeah, the Cyrix DX4 core is compatible with the Intel DX4. It comes up with 1.1 million transistors and 8 kilobytes of level 1 cache. A bus clock of 33 MHz and a multiplier of 3 brings this CPU CPU to its 100 megahertz. The AMD DX4 here were developed in CMOS technology and came up with 1.2 million transistors and 8 kilobyte of four-way set associative code and data cache. Yeah, one here with write through and the other with write back cache algorithm. So write back is slightly faster and in this video I want to measure this to see how much write back cache is faster than write through and if you can see this in games or only in synthetic benchmarks. So how to distinguish between them? Uh, the AMD with write uh, through cache has here 100 NV8T printed on the top, and the write back version uh, has written here 100 SV8B. So, this one is also then named as enhanced CPU, which is shown also from the BIOS on the post screen. Yeah, the Intel DX4 shines with 1.6 million transistors and 16 kilobytes of level 1 cache, so it's a double uh, compared to the other. Also here we have two versions, one with write back and the other one with write through cache. Uh, also here I would like to see the difference. Yeah, the write back version has written on the top uh, here and EW on the chip, also the aspect number SK096 uh, indicates the write back version. Uh, the write through version you can see here it's only written and E or also the spec number SK051 indicates here the write through version. So uh, here should be a slight difference and we will see this of course later on after our benchmark. So I will test now five different CPUs and compare the results at the end. I expect only slight differences and all of those chips here are for sure a very nice choice if you want to build up a 100 MHz 486 setup. But nevertheless we will see today which one performs better. Here now the hardware I will use for the benchmarks, the ASUS PVI486 SP3. It offers VESA local bus as well as PCE bus and this board is the best socket 3 board I have ever tested so far. With the latest BIOS version it can support all brands of and versions of socket 3 CPUs up to 133 MHz as well as Pentium overdrive CPUs. Also overclocking and downclocking is possible with this board and the BIOS provides many possibilities to fine-tune memory access times and speeds. Yeah, then we need some memory, two 8 MB 72 pin uh, RAMs with an access time of 60 nanoseconds. As local drive I am using this IDE to SD adapter with a 2 GB memory card. And to avoid any limitation caused by the video card I tested several ones and the best video performance I was able to get was out of this Visa Local Bus card made by Zenglab. The heart of this card is the ET4000WP chip. Yeah, the W32 offers improved local bus support along with further increased host interface performance. So I was not able to find any other card which could compete to this card in this mainboard and I tested about 30 different ones. Yeah, but now it's time to start testing and I'm very curious which CPU 
will win the performance test. What do you think? Will it be almost a tie or big differences between them? Put a comment below and let me know. Yeah, so let's switch it on and yes posting straight away that's good for the benchmarks i'm booting plain doors without any drivers first i'm checking with speedsys the video and memory through boots we can see here 110 megabytes per second for our memory which is a quite good value for a Swocket 3 board this value is not depending on the cpu and will remain always the same yeah, here we can see the ET4000 video chip with a throughput of 21.2 MB, which is also a very good value. Over here we have the CPU benchmark, which is in this case the Intel DX4 with write back cache. And this is one of the values I will take under consideration. And here we can see the memory timing of our level 1 cache of 94 MB per second, which will also change from one CPU to other. And therefore I will put this also into the benchmark statistic. Yeah, so at the end it took me a while to perform all these tests on this lot of CPUs, writing it down and bringing it into a decent scale, into a chart. First CPU benchmark I did with Norton this info. Yeah, the Intel and AMD with write back cache got the same score of 216 points. Yeah, and the Cyrix lost the first round with 169 points. To get the proper scaling in the chart, I divided the values by 10. Next one is Speedsys, and the winner here are both Intel CPUs with a score of 42.3. So there is no difference of write through or write back cache. AMD is here the slowest one with a score of 37.42 and also for both the same. At the level 1 cache timing, the Intel with write back cache takes clearly the lead with 94.33 MB per second. After that, the AMD with write back cache and a value of 92.71 MB per second. The other three CPUs are in the range of 73 to 77 MB per second and clearly slower. The next one is check it to make some integer and floating point tests. We get here two values dry stones for integer calculations and kilo weed stones for floating point operations. Yeah, the dry stones I put into kilo dry stones in the chart and the kilo weed stones I converted to mega weed stones to get a proper scaling at the end. With integer calculations, the Intel with write back cache takes again clearly the lead and to my surprise, the Cyrix has the strongest floating point unit. I'm curious if we can see this later in the Quake benchmark as well, cause Quake is heavily using the FPU. But from my experience, I know that synthetic CPU marks are sometimes completely different to gaming benchmarks. So then let's go on with 3D Bench. Again, the Intel with write back cache shines here with the best performance and 68.8 frames per second, with 0.6 frames behind the other Intel DX4 and the AMD CPUs with 3 and 4 frames behind. Cyrix is again the last one with 62 frames per second. PC Player is also always very nice to challenge an old setup. The results are pretty interesting. Of course, again, the Intel with write back cache takes the lead with 20 frames per second and close behind the second Intel DX4. For some reasons, the Cyrix CPU can handle this one much better than the 3D Bench and takes here the third place. Yeah, AMD lost definitely the PC player benchmark. The most important benchmark is of course Doom. Here you can see the comparison of the Intel DX4 on the left side and the Cyrix CPU on the right side. Yeah, and we can see the Cyrix CPU is a little bit behind the Intel CPU already. 
For sure the reason for that are the 16 kilobytes of level 1 cache from the Intel compared to the 8 kilobytes of the other CPUs. And very interesting that the Intel with write through cache takes here the lead with 41.74 FPS, close behind the second Intel CPU. And also very good with 41.4 FPS, the AMD with write back cache. And Cyrix lost again here with about 35 frames. Yeah, anyhow, Doom will run a maximum frame rate of 35 during playing, so you don't need to cry now if you have a Cyrix at home. It will max out Doom anyhow. The last but not least is Quake. Basically, it's not really playable on a 486, but at the end, good to use it as a benchmark, cause Quake is heavily using the floating point unit. Yeah, and to my surprise again, here the Intel with right through cache won the race with 11.8 frames per second. Yeah, very close behind the second Intel. The AMD with right through cache took the third place, and it's interesting that the AMD with right back cache is same as the Intel 0.1 frames behind. This difference is not much and I performed these tests several times to be sure that this 0.1 frames is not happening by random. I got always the same results. So for Doom and Quake we cannot see a big difference between write through and write back cache algorithms, where you would expect a better result with write back cache. Yeah, and the Cyrix lost again this round with 9.2 frames. So at the end we got here a lot of measurement results which are leading us to the winner. A combination of different synthetic benchmarks and game benchmarks should give us here a realistic rating. Yeah, and the winner is... Ta-da! The Intel DX4 with right back cache is taking clearly the lead with 367 points. The second place goes to the AMD with right back cache, followed by the other Intel chip. Yeah, and the last place is covered by Cyrix. Honestly, I also did not expect this result. Of course, I thought that the Intel would win the race, but Cyrix on the last place? Ay, 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 ay. I didn't think that this can happen. But nevertheless, as I mentioned already, all CPUs here are a very good choice at the end for a 100 MHz 486 setup. I hope you liked this video and if yes, please subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Leave me a comment if you want to communicate, I'm reading all of them. Thank you very much for watching, have a nice day and see you next time.